Welcome back to another Music Theory Bite. This video is all about singing and recognizing scale degrees in the major mode. Before you watch this one, it might be a good idea to check out my video about orally finding tonic first. There are some skills in that one that you'll find helpful as you move through this video. The easy way to find that is to subscribe to my channel. You can do that by just clicking the link down below and all my videos are there ready to be watched. So if you're ready, let's begin. The ability to sing and recognize any scale degree in a key is one of the most important skills you will need to fluently read and hear music. There are so many skills that you will develop later on that are really dependent upon your ability to find a tonal center and sing scale degrees around that tonal center. Why? Well, we hear music as scale degrees around an established or implied tonic, at least if we don't have absolute pitch. Each scale degree has a unique energy that wants to get back to the tonic pitch in some way. If we can learn these unique energies, you will always know what scale degree you're hearing. And, just as important, if you know how the energies sound, you can create the right sound when you're sight reading. There's a story, it's probably not true, but it still illustrates the point pretty well. Johann Sebastian Bach, the famous composer, had many children, and it's said that his children used to sneak downstairs in the middle of the night and get to the clavichord and play this. And then they would sneak back upstairs, and the old man would be so distraught that he'd have to come running downstairs and play the final pitch. Now, if you're like most people, you've probably had the same reaction. You were just dying for that last pitch to resolve upward. We can do the same thing going the opposite direction. Listen to this. Notice how there's a lot of energy in that last pitch wanting to drive you back down to the last pitch of the scale. Just as there was a lot of energy wanting to drive up to the final pitch of the scale on the way up. The energies are very strong, but they're very different. Each scale degree in a key has that type of unique energy that wants to resolve to another pitch and eventually to tonic. And that's what we're going to be examining today. How to learn those energies and how to reproduce those energies so that we always know what each pitch, each scale degree, is supposed to sound like. Before we start talking about the scale degrees, two quick words, first about keys and then about syllables. Because music works the way that it does, it doesn't really matter what key we're in. The relationships between the individual scale degrees in a key stay the same. So whether we're in F major, D major, B flat major, or G major, the second scale degree is always going to sound like a second scale degree and want to move back to the first scale degree in the same way. Throughout this video, we're going to be staying in the key of C major. Now about syllables. I'll cover syllables more in depth in another video. In this video, I'm going to go back and forth between using scale degree numbers and solfege syllables, the traditional Do, Re, Mi sounds. No matter what system your teacher decides to use, you should adhere to that system. Each system has its own strengths and weaknesses. If you're not currently enrolled in a music theory course, you can use whatever system makes the most sense to you. The first scale degree pattern we're going to learn is for tonic. This scale degree doesn't really want to move anywhere, so it's the easiest scale degree pattern to learn. That is, it simply goes Do. That's all you need to know. The next scale degree pattern is for the dominant, or scale degree 5. Scale degree 5 has a reasonable amount of energy in it that it wants to get back to tonic generally by moving through the tonic triad. Five, three, one, or sol, mi, do. Now you'll notice that there are also two alternate patterns for the dominant, meaning that these are other ways that you might on occasion choose to hear how scale degree five wants to move. So for example, we can have scale degree five moving up a scale to scale degree one. Five, six, seven, one. We can also have scale degree five simply leaping up the scale degree one 
as it often does at the beginning of a phrase or a piece of music. Sol, do. The next scale degree we're going to learn about is the median, or scale degree three. Scale degree three is fairly stable, being a member of the tonic triad, but it still has a little bit of energy that wants to move back to tonic. And the way it does it is this. It moves down by step through two to one. Three, two, one, or mi, re, do. Next, let's deal with the two scale degrees with the most energy. Scale degree seven has the most energy of any scale degree at all. This owes mostly to the fact that it's a half step away from tonic. And it doesn't matter what octave we put it in, scale degree seven wants to move up to scale degree one. Sev one or ti do. Listen for the extreme amount of energy in that scale degree and how it wants to push you up towards the tonic pitch. On the other side of tonic is the supertonic or scale degree two. Two one re do. That scale degree wants to step down to scale degree one. Scale degree two has an alternate pattern, which is oftentimes easier to hear for people who play bass instruments or people who play a lot of jazz music. That is, following the circle of fifths, two, five, one, makes a lot of sense to people who are very harmonically oriented. Again, using syllables, re, sol, do, the last two scale degrees are sometimes the most difficult ones for people to hear. Scale degree six, or the submedian, has a lot of energy to move down. Six, five, three, one. First to the dominant, and once it reaches the dominant, then it follows the same pattern as the dominant down to tonic. La, sol, mi, do. The sixth scale degree is in some ways one of the most beautiful scale degrees in all of music because of its energy to want to drive back down to the dominant. It's my favorite scale degree of all the possibilities out there. Scale degree six has an alternate scale degree pattern that goes the opposite direction, moving up by step to get to tonic. Six, seven, one, or la, ti, do. Sometimes you'll just hear a melody wanting to move that direction, especially if it's trying to increase the amount of energy towards tonic. The fourth scale degree is somewhat tricky. It's also a half step away from the third scale degree, so we're going to expect that there's going to be a lot of energy in it. This one is oftentimes tricky for people to just pick off out of thin air. Four, three, one. You'll hear that it resolves first down to the more stable scale degree three, which then takes you down through the tonic triad by arpeggiation to tonic. Fa, mi, do. An alternate pattern for scale degree four is for people that hear or play bass lines quite a bit. Four, five, one. It's a very standard bass line. Now that we know all the individual scale degree patterns, what can we do with these? Well, for starters, you should practice each of the scale degree patterns every day, individually, separated, so that you can get used to the unique sound of each scale degree. You can also put them all together in a little song or a little melody that will help you remember the entire sequence. And it goes like this. One, two, one, three, two, one, four, three, one, Five, three, one, six, five, three, one, sev, one, sev, one, sev, one, five, one. And one more time using solfege syllables so to hear what it sounds like again. Do, re, do, mi, re, do, fa, mi, do. Sol, mi, do, la, sol, mi, do, ti, do, ti, do, ti, do, sol, do. 
we can use this pattern in other ways. For example, if we were to sing just the beginning note of most of the patterns, I've grayed out the notes that we won't sing, but we'll still hear them, it would sound like this. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Now you'll notice that just creates a scale. But psychologically, I'm thinking about the scale in a much different way than if I just stack notes on top of the previous pitch. I think my intonation is going to be better, and my awareness of what scale degree I'm singing is going to be better. After you've sung all the scale degree patterns in succession like that, try singing them individually, but mix up the order of them. You might come up with random orders, simply by having people write down numbers, take numbers that you already know, such as your phone number, and translate those into successions of scale degree patterns. So for example, if I were to take the song 8675309, that 80s hit, and translate that into scale degree patterns, I need to do a little bit of work first. We don't have an 8, a 9, or a 0, so what I can do is I can treat 8 as scale degree 1 up an octave, 9 can be scale degree 2 up an octave, and I'm going to use 0 as the alternate pattern for scale degree 5. So it might sound a little bit like this. 1, 6, 5, 3, 1, 7, 1, 5, 3, 1, 3, 2, 1, 5, 1, 2, 1, after you've done that, you might consider practicing all of your scale degree patterns simply by singing the first note. Hear the rest of the pattern that gets you back to tonic, but don't sing it. So in essence what we're doing is we're picking off scale degrees and just singing those. Taking my 80s hit melody again, 8675309. Do, la, ti, sol, mi. Sol, re. You'll notice that, that makes a very jagged, angular melody. Much harder than any melody I would typically have to sing if I were doing it a solfege exercise or sight reading music. But if I can handle that, just picking off scale degrees, regular music, real music, should be a breeze. The next thing you're going to want to do is take a single pitch and then treat that as each of the individual scale degrees. So I'm going to start each one off the same pitch. There's a lot of value in doing this because now instead of treating everything in the same key, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to shift my key based on the scale degree that I start on. So for example, I would start out with one, then I would go two, one, and I should find myself in the key of B flat. And I go back to my starting pitch, three, two, one. And I go back to my starting pitch, four, three, one. And then my next pitch, five, three, one. And then my next pitch, six, seven, one. I use the alternate pattern because the other one was getting kind of low. And then finally, seven, one. So I can sing each scale degree pattern in the key in which I'm set up, or I can use those to find tonic in any key if I get used to singing the patterns without having tonic established first. So a few other things that you can practice. As you're playing your instrument or singing a song, just stop on any random pitch and see if you can identify what scale degree pattern that goes with that pitch. You can also put yourself in the key of C, close your eyes, and play random pitches. See if you can identify the scale degree that goes along with each pitch that you play. If you have a friend, you can do that in other keys. Just take turns playing random scale degrees for the other person. Finally, practice, practice, practice every day for just a few minutes. 
this skill is so fundamental to everything that you're going to be doing as you learn about music theory and reading music. And these things are going to be your best friends. Scale degrees, scale degrees, scale degrees. My students hear me say it all the time. They need to have these things down cold so they can learn all the other structures that we need to learn as professional musicians. You'll quickly find that the more you use this, the more you sing your scale degree patterns, the more proficient you'll become at recognizing scale degree patterns as you hear them. So let's summarize. Scale degrees are the way that most people hear music. A tonic is either established or inferred, and all other sounds are heard as scale degrees in relation to that tonal center. Each scale degree has a unique energy that creates a unique sound that wants to get back to tonic in a specific way. And that's what our scale degree patterns are designed to do. Get us used to hearing those unique energies so that we can recognize the scale degree of any pitch that we hear in any piece of music. Well, that's it. If you found this video helpful, please like and please subscribe so you can be up on the latest music theory videos that I'm posting and feel free to leave constructive comments below. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next video.